All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Geek Garage Podcast, the most inclusive and accessible nerd culture audio program on the interwebs. I'm your host, David Dassaw, and join with me, as always, is my wife and co-host, Lindsay Dassaw. How are you doing, Lindsay? Pretty good. How are you? Uh, I'm not dead yet. Um, it's a Sunday evening, and uh, yeah, I, I honestly can't believe that I'm not dead yet, but here we are, so that's good. Ever the yeah. optimist. I know, right? Uh, th- uh, for, for you listeners, um, that is the voice of our um, our guest today. If you have been listening f- to the podcast for a while and or caught our uh, History of Halloween episode that we did back in uh, Halloween um, in October, that is the voice of Ashley White. Um <laughs> White, white. Um, <laughs> how are you doing, Ashley? I'm great. Thank you yeah. for letting me be here. I'm excited. Of course, the pleasure is all on this side of the table. We are Michael Bolton fans. <laughs> we celebrate <laughs> his entire catalog. <laughs> so, Ashley, I have a very important question. Have you seen the new season of Stranger Things? She's, I have not. She's barely finished um, the first season. Sad. I restarted it today you okay. because Good for you. everybody in my life has been telling me that I need to, I, that I would love stranger things, even mm-hmm. though I tried to love it back when it first came out and just, yeah. I failed the assignment. So we're starting over. This is like summer yeah. school for stranger things for me. Well, I would think the eighties nostalgia should give you something right. to work with anyway, but, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I was just asking because that's why we really wanted to do this episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. So excited. Yes. So, um, so yeah, today we, uh, Lindsay, thank you for, for mentioning that because that kind of brings us into the reason why we are doing this episode on the, the, the satanic panic uh, of the, the 80s to the, the about the mid 90s, I believe, mm-hmm. is because um it was worked into the newest season of stranger things stranger things season four part one and uh it is uh, for those of you that don't know it is a thing that actually happens um our younger listeners might not know that or maybe have picked it up uh, just by um you know listening to people on the internet but yeah uh like us um but yes the satanic panic was very much a real thing um and was was kind of like um was like crazy tinfoil hat people in QAnon uh for our day and age um yeah okay so like the panicking was real but the actual yes. satanism was not i would like to make that clear right. yeah so it's like two truths and a lie. We, <laughs> yes. we we need another truth for that to be a whole thing. But yeah, like half of that title is something that actually happened. And the other half is just people are stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that's that is accurate. Um, <laughs> Welcome um, to history. Yeah. Thanks for coming uh, to my it, TED talk. Yeah. Remember that uh, that screenshot of Pocahontas? where um, the, the the Indian chief was like, these white men are dangerous. And it was like yeah. U.S. history summed up in one sentence. <laughs> yeah. I So actually, I came across that so late in my life. I, Pocahontas? I, well, no. Um, white men? The movie. <laughs> trust me, no. Not in, <laughs> not in Tennessee. That was not a, there's not a shortage. Right. <laughs> the yes, meme. that is correct. Okay. <laughs> The meme I came across just as I was getting ready to leave a museum job, but I did incorporate that with high schoolers. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it with the youngins, but like the high schoolers who could actually get the joke. Right. Very (laughs) accurate. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, getting getting back on track. We are here because we're going to talk about the satanic panic. Um Ashley has so graciously provided a plethora of research um, going for the most part in chronological order from kind of the, the start of things working its way to the end where they realize that, Hey, we fucked up and jumped to conclusions and made a bunch of mistakes. 
Um, and then, you know, as we know, history repeats itself, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, so Ashley, are, are, are you ready to start your engines? Oh my gosh. I've been ready. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's talking about history, like go, let's, let's do this. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, well, feel free to kick things off whenever you are, you're, you're setting your haunches. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the other podcasts that I've listened to have kind of gone way far back. So mm-hmm. I feel like just starting my notes start in the 1960s. I feel like I did a good job because I have listened to podcasts where they start in the 1700s. So wow. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. yeah but, I don't think you have to go all the way back to like England and the nuns in the convent. You did, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. It's it's kind of like how the movie The Nun was unnecessary. Like I was really psyched for it because that was my favorite part of the Conjuring series. But then like yeah. it, sh- then she actually showed up for her own movie, and I was like, I changed my to. mind. Yeah, it didn't have to be yeah. this. <laughs> So that's literally the story of my life. I'll have what a, a what I think is quote unquote the best idea I've ever had, and then it turns out like really shitty, just bad. <laughs> so like well, the execution is always poor. Yes, so. welcome to our lives. <laughs> the <laughs> execution is always poor. Ugh. So, um, which actually, if you guys want to do an episode on Henry the Eighth, we can talk about poor execution. We can. <laughs> absolutely do that um i'm related to two of his wives but whatever so let's do like a really broad brush sort of background spiritualism has very long been a thing in the united states we've had several spiritual reawakenings and you know mass conversions and religious revivals basically um and this is not necessarily The the satanic panic is not a religious revival by any means, but, you know, Americans have kind of, since our founding, shifted how we perceive religion and religion's place in public spaces like churches, schools, government, you know, stuff like that. Um, We we started Mormonism and Scientology, and then there was Waco, so like... (laughs) Um, Americans have always had this kind of special relationship with religion that I don't think a lot of other countries had, but Mm -hmm. early 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, we got really big into spiritualism and talking to the dead and seances and blah. And obviously mainstream Christians were never super comfortable with that because the Bible specifically says, Hey, don't do this. It's a bad idea. So that's where (laughs) they're coming from. Like, right. you know, it's kind of in their main text. Um, yeah. And then you, you get into the 1960s and it's that, it's a counterculture, you know, things are changing. There's rock and roll music and mm-hmm. women are wearing bikinis and cars are fast and we're, we're mm-hmm. progressing scientifically and medically. It's like a ton of different things are changing. And I'm going to kind of put my start of the satanic panic Back in 1966, when Anton LaVey founded the Church of Satan in San Francisco. So for the Church of Satan, 1966 is Anno Santanus, which is the first year of the Age of Satan. Mm. So, did, did you say anus? <laughs> anus? <laughs> An- yeah. Oh my. So this is a side note, but I'm going to tell it because like, why not? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I drive by a Hardee's. And they're advertising the <laughs> the Angus thick burgers. I never see the G mentally. I know it's there, but in my mind, I'm always like anus thick burgers. That's really what you've got on your sign there. Why does it's, your Why does your brain omit the G? I mean, I think my I think my brain is a 12 year old boy and thinks that's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. So I just do it every time. <laughs> anus thick burger. It's a challenge. It's a problem for me personally. I don't think it's a problem for anybody else. It it's, shouldn't be. That's fine. It, you, you know, it kind of sounds like a porn name. <laughs> it really does. It's so upsetting. My name Ugh. is. Your name is uh, uh, Ron Jeremy. That's cool. My name is Anus Thickburger. <laughs> right? Like, who's going to get top billing now? Come on. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to be that guy's fluffer. Oh. 
Anyways. You can go ahead. Mark me off that list. I am not interested in that position. <laughs> right. Anyways, back to so, Satan. Anyway. Um, I... So there are a ton of biographies and and resources out there on Anton LaVey. If you're interested, just literally Google it. They're they're not challenging to find. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally did not know that much about him before I started researching. I'm not going to lie. I knew that he founded the Church of Satan, and I knew that people blamed him in some way for this. Like, there was a connection. I knew that between him and the Satanic Panic, but I didn't really know anything about him. So I have, like... I got way too into this. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually looking at like four different newspaper clippings right now that I saved just because I want to go back and read them for leisure later. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So he, his professional name was Anton Zandor LaVey spelled L A V E Y, but he was born Howard Stanton LaVey L E V E Y in Chicago. Um, his dad was a car salesman. His mom were, or his mom came from German Ukrainian Ukrainian immigrants. Mm-hmm. So I kind of felt like, you know, with everything going on in the Ukraine right now, there's that little connection. Right. But um, so I've got this in my notes here, and I know I sent this to y'all. I just have to like, I'm just shocked. Um, so Levey, prior to starting the Church of Scientology, actually was a big cat guy. Mm -hmm. And had a prized African lion, I'm going to mispronounce this, Togare, T-O-G-A-R-E, or Togare, I don't know. I don't know why you would name your lion something that sounds like tiger, but that's me. Um, But anyway. Yeah, yeah, I saw your notes and I was like, I wonder how that's pronounced. Like, Togar? Togar? Togar, I think. Togar? 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 Doesn't matter. I, so there's also a he he and the lion were on the news one night and I meant to watch the clipping before this so that I had the pronunciation completely spaced on that. Um, but I do love that quote from the newsreel quote LeVay emphasizes that his family loves Togar. We're just going to call him. And mm-hmm. don't want to give him up solely on hearsay and that the neighbors claim that they don't object to his Satanism just the lion's noise (laughs) the neighbors don't object to the church of satan but they do object to the lion keeping them up at night like not the lion i got keeping them up i gotta say those are some pretty reasonable neighbors like right i mean if you got neighbors and they're complaining about your lion i'd say they're well within their rights to complain but like to be like yeah the satanism perfectly fine like you know worship however many devils you want uh but the lion he's he's got to shut his fucking mouth he just yeah i mean and again not even objecting to his presence because if my neighbors got a lion in their backyard i would object to the lion's presence yeah i would not be mad that it's 2 a.m and he's making a lot of racket (laughs) jesus i mean Uh, i complain about the neighbor's chickens making a lot of racket but not not a lion but anyway yeah. I thought that was hilarious that it's just a whole little side, John. So three years into the Church of Satan's creation, they were doing a lot of weddings and funerals, and he had published, or he was about to publish the Satanic Bible. Um, so they were getting a ton of, of media coverage. And again, I think location is super important here. It's all out in California. Mm-hmm. And so the press actually wasn't bad press. I expected when I looked through the newspapers to find a ton of, this is the end of the world as we know it. Like, what is he doing? This is the downfall of society. But it was just like, yeah, the church, it's out there. Here's some things that they believe. Go if you want. Like, it was it was not what I expected at all, particularly for 1969. Right. Yeah, that's but, a little surprising. Yeah. Um, so only a couple of months after the Satanic Bible is published, here's your history question. <laughs> what other super famous thing happened in 1969? In the end of 19, well, towards the end of 1969 specifically. Mm, I I don't, I don't know. Literally changed the American landscape. Charlie Manson. Oh, sure. Okay. The Manson family, <laughs> and which those were all described as ritualistic killings Mm -hmm. so (laughs) i'm the devil 
and I'm here to yeah. do, I, I'm here to do some devil shit. <laughs> I'm here to do some devil I'm, shit. <laughs> I'm I'm as real as a donut, motherfucker. <laughs> I loved that movie. <laughs> I love it too. It was my uh, my official slash unofficial folding laundry movie for a yes. very long time. Like because it was so long, like it was perfect for folding laundry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry. So yeah. no, so you're good. So like, just within a couple of months, you've got the Satanic Bible being published, and then the mm. Manson killings, right, and the Manson killings have often been described as like the end of the innocence of, of America. Like mm-hmm. we, we've gotten into some super real shit now. Um, so <laughs> people are kind of changing and I guess reflecting, particularly, like I said, you've got people in the Bible belt and in the Midwest who are not into the church of Satan at all. And it's their literal worst fear. And they're hearing all this news coming out of California about the Manson murders and the satanic Bible and, Mm -hmm. um, Anton LaVey doing documentaries and publishing books about Satanism. And so he's, his name recognition is climbing higher and higher. And the church of Satan really isn't getting a ton of bad press comparatively. Like I said, I was trying to think about if the church of Satan had been formed today, what the news headlines would look like mm-hmm. and there probably wouldn't I, be any <laughs> well and i i just i don't know like i said i was just so surprised to see so many supportive news articles coming out in 1969 about the church of satan like it's it's super interesting yeah that's it's very odd um yeah, yeah so and again around the same time you've also got you know the devils in rock and roll music and people are just kind of starting to freak out about the direction that society is taking, that we're, we're becoming a more violent society. They blame dungeons and dragons mm-hmm. and eventually video games, but it's, you know, music is always the devil basically. So that yeah. threat is kind of always in there. Yeah. And, and there is our connection to stranger things because as we all know, D and D has played a significant role uh, no pun intended or pun intended. Sure. Pun intended. Sure. A uh, significant role in uh, Stranger Things uh, for pretty much every season. So, yeah. There you go. So it's just anyway. that that whole living in that fantasy world is mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's devil worship because they're fighting weird creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. God forbid you play like a an innocent little game where you make up scenarios and you, you battle witches and wizards and dragons and yeah, you know, spawns of Satan uh, and it be totally innocuous. Like, you know, there always I mean, has to be some underlying. I think the biggest fear was um, kids using their creativity. Like, yeah. Yeah. Coming up with their own ideas. Yeah. You got to keep them little shits in line. You seemed know. dangerous to parents. Word. <laughs> yeah we we can't have those little kids you know actually uh you know forming logic in their brains and thinking for themselves <laughs> that would be the worst terrible critical thinking skills are the worst and yes. i mean it's not they don't even see it as the people playing are the good guys who are fighting off the evil monsters mm-hmm. and i mean in our lifetimes we didn't really, I don't feel like I did anyway, hear that much shit about D&D. It was Harry Potter. Harry Potter's yeah. the devil. Harry Potter's introducing everybody to witchcraft and, and Satanism. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that it's was the, the same thing. That was the well, big so thing did Cinderella. I mean, Fairy Godmother had a wand too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, and these stories are so old that like there's, why are we fi- just now talking shit about them? Like Cinderella's been around for at least a hundred years yeah maybe closer to two old. right she's ancient right. which that's where the the witchcraft is she's still mm-hmm. alive mm-hmm. um so <laughs> if we're moving through a chronology we're now in the 1980s um and of course heavy metals coming in and, and everybody fucking hates that 
Um, that's definitely the devil because it's loud right. and it's angry and you can't understand what they're saying half the time, but they all look very scary. So that's definitely the devil. Yes. <laughs> you have, you have bands like ACDC screaming about, um, you know, she told me to come, but I was already there. And then you have other bands like shout at the demo and right. uh, yeah. And uh, oh my God, like why, why are they saying these things? Stop them. <laughs> Grab your pitchforks and tiki torches. Make sure you get your Bible, though, because right, like that's the, that's an important part of this process. Yes. You, you, know, you have to you have to well, smack like, someone uh, with something, and it might as well be the Bible. Logically, the music was just progressing, right? I mean, yeah. it was just shock value, basically, that they wanted oh, yeah. to provide. Because, like, you know, you take it to the next generation or so, like with us and. Um, okay, well, the devil's already been talked about, you know, we already have all this screaming and, you know, all that. So now it's just like a whole lot more cursing. <laughs> yes. Well, we're consistently with pretty much everything we do with science, philosophy, popular entertainment, media, like the whole goal of every generation is to push the boundary a little bit further just mm -hmm. to see how far it'll stretch. Right. And that's, I mean, that's just what we've been doing as a civilization since the literal beginning of time. It's just a natural progression. It's just people hate it. <laughs> Fucking hate it. That is, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is the professional historian. That's how I'm summing up the history of the world. People <laughs> fucking hate it. That, that's that's why you're a good historian. It's because you make things fun and interesting <laughs> and funny. Speaking of funny, <laughs> let's talk yes. about this. Speaking of funny, in 1984, Ricky Casso was arrested for murdering his friend while high on mescaline. Oh, Ricky. That, <laughs> oh, that Ricky. So <laughs> He always got high on mescaline and started stabbing people I mean, in the fucking face. I literally don't even know where you get a hold of mescaline. And this motherfucker got a hold of enough of it that he just murdered somebody. <laughs> I mean, maybe like, he had contacts with uh, with Hunter Thompson. I mean, I, I've I've heard that he had his his fill of pretty much every drug. So um, I don't yeah. even know that much about Hunter Thompson. That I like, I have enough to carry on a two second conversation about him. But I know sure. that, like, that's the thing I know: drugs, yes. drugs everywhere, all the drugs, yes. all the kinds exactly. of drugs. Exactly. <laughs> that's the only thing you need to know. No, I'm just playing. There's plenty of other stuff to know about Hunter Thompson. Thompson, but um, I imagine another podcast, maybe. <laughs> So, like, Ricky Casso's arrest was not, it wasn't a standalone. There had been several other arrests around the same time of just general crime, like murder, theft, robbery, like, whatever. Um, some higher level crimes, some lower level crimes. But when these crazy people did crazy things, they were either high on drugs or wearing a rock and roll t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, there was one case where the cops raided some, a suspect's house and they ended up confiscating a whole bunch of his rock and roll records because that was the motive of the murder that he committed <laughs> to them. Like it was a direct link. Like he listened to this music and then he killed somebody. Mm -hmm. So, and I think okay. that one may have been ACDC too. Man, ACDC is taking a hit. Yeah. That's the yeah. shirt that Ricky Casso was wearing when he got arrested. Um, oh, Ricky. Everybody strive as hard as you can in your life to be the opposite of Ricky Casso. So, like. Yes. No he, mescaline. No mescaline. Don't murder somebody in front of multiple other witnesses and then tell everybody and then actually, according to one source at least, accept money to lead somebody to the spot where you committed the murder. Like, he was. <laughs> T charging admission apparently again according to just the one source he was charging admission for the tour of where he murdered his friend like that's super fucked up and you kids want to see a dead body <laughs> you know that's exactly what this dumbass said probably like hmm. idiot it's, it's all a hell of a drug um <laughs> so yes <laughs> Casso had stabbed his friend 36 times and oh, sliced out his eyes. Nice. So it, the murder was immediately described as ritualistic and Casso was a self-proclaimed Satanist, but I don't know if he was actually an actual member of the church of Satan, but he was telling everybody I'm a Satanist. 
I was high on drugs. You want to come see the spot. Mm. And <laughs> right. So like, it wasn't hard to find him. I mean, he I was think... probably a, uh, a member of the church of Satan, just like the Westboro Baptist church call themselves Christians. Yeah. Like, you fucking yeah. lying to everybody. Yeah, like the yep. Church of Satan was probably like, uh, we don't fucking know that guy. We're not friends. Like, I don't right. know her. <laughs> she doesn't go here. She doesn't go here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one of them all. <laughs> I enjoy that line. Ashley I like Winston to say non sequiturs. Yeah, uh, raise the roof. I just enjoy saying that line whenever it doesn't make <laughs> sense, but there's a whole here. She doesn't need to go here. Um <laughs> It's the most fun saying it at the mall. Um, <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's just do that. Great so opinion. Casso was obviously arrested again while wearing an ACDC shirt. Mm -hmm. So that's the photograph that's out there. And, and obviously it's not a good look for heavy metal because everybody already fucking hates it. And they think it's satanic, but now they have that very tangible something to tie it to. Right. And of course, Casso was a little bitch and he committed suicide less than two days later. Um, and I say he's a little bitch because he didn't even take his punishment. Mm -hmm. He he couldn't even handle, basically, the yeah. mess that he had created. Oh, yeah. So, again, things are just kind of slowly building up. And there's a lot of other cultural things that are happening at the time. But this is already probably going to be like a 12-hour long podcast. So let's move on to Geraldo. <laughs> um, I will say I had so much nostalgia in researching this. Because Geraldo's in here, Oprah, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, like all those talk shows I used to try and skip school to watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you, you two can chime in on this because I <laughs> did not pay attention to any of this. Like I, <laughs> I mean, I have a penis, so I, mm -hmm. I gravitated towards the Simpsons and King of the Hill and other shit. Um, not Oprah and Geraldo Rivera. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm just going to say, I, I wasn't sure where you were going with that sentence after I have a penis. <laughs> I figured that's where you were going to gravitate to quite frankly. Like you just, <laughs> no, I'm a, you're a I'm a dude. To watch so, TV. Uh, yeah. I'm a dude. So I did dude stuff. Uh, for yeah, we know what you did. <laughs> dude stuff <laughs> with your penis. <laughs> so, Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so one of the big things that stoked the fire and really and truly got the satanic panic like up to kind of, almost to a fever pitch at this point is Geraldo. Like again, Geraldo, mm -hmm. the guy who tried to break into Al Capone's vault and found nothing after weeks of buildup and like everybody was super pissed, basically did it again. Um, so in 1988, he released this documentary. I love this title. It's on YouTube. You can still watch it. Yeah. It's actually, that's what I'm going to watch the next time I'm folding laundry, which is tomorrow. <laughs> oof, needs it. Oh. But Devil Worship, Exposing Satan's Underground. <laughs> and I just. Um, I mean, it sounds <laughs> sexual, right? Like. Yes. It, like it might as well be like let's let's suck off Satan. That's basically what Geraldo said. They sat around and did all day. It was like a big just circle jerk while everybody was talking about Lucifer, devil, um, and a big red dick. <laughs> so I wasn't present at the meetings. I'm just going to take your word for that. <laughs> that that's yes. what was brought up. I don't know. That's but, what I did I mean, after school. I, I, I went home and made a sandwich. I don't, these are two nice. different lives. <laughs> so all that documentary did was like reinforce all of the untrue and the negative stereotypes. Um, all of the people that they showed in the documentary were metal heads. So they're wearing like heavy metal band shirts. And then they're talking about drinking blood and sacrificing babies. And mm -hmm. so it's, it, it really was purely made to stoke the fire and to make things worse and up to that point it was the highest rated documentary available on television to date like oh, wow. in america's history more people watched that than they were watching anything else at the time Holy so shit. what had been in the back of people's minds was now like really solidly moving forward and of course 
if you started talking about the subject at the time, it wasn't too hard to see, like to connect the dots basically and to make this giant conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, another thing that's super important to mention here that's ha- been happening in the background, the laws around reporting child abuse had changed in the late seventies, early eighties. So mand- mandatory reporters were created. So doctors, teachers, whoever comes in contact with a child um, as a mandatory reporter and sees that the child is being abused, they legally have to report it to the police. So obviously the number of child abuse incidents skyrocketed. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it was in the news all day, every day. It's all people were hearing about are the insane number of children who are, who are being abused, both um, physically and sexually. And of course, the the sexual abuse of children was very salacious. It was very upsetting. And, you know, there's that old news headline, if it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. So if it's gory, if it's horrific, it's if it's the worst, most unimaginable thing you can happen, we're going to talk about it for the next 72 hours until you want to break down and cry. Yeah. And child sex abuse became the hot topic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got all of that happening and then the rock and roll is the devil and the Geraldo documentary and people are connecting, you know, on this documentary and other, obviously other sources, it was a whole lot of child sacrifice. So the two got linked together because people were hearing so much about them mm-hmm. that what was happening, actually happening to real people over here and what was fake happening to nobody over there <laughs> became the same thing. Yes. Um, going back to 1980 let me rewind michelle speaks was published or michelle remembers was published and that was hugely instrumental in background um it's it's a book about if you're not familiar a woman went to therapy and quote unquote recovered memories of sexual abuse at the hands of her satanic parents Mm -hmm. um and if i remember right because i'll be honest i have not read it in a very long time, um, over 10 years, I'm pretty sure she says that her parents either raped her or arranged for her to be raped a total of over 600 times. And Jesus. these were things she did not, she wasn't even aware of until she went to therapy. Mm-hmm. But wasn't so, she like hypnotized? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I do think there was hypnotism involved. And so like, I, I know you're not through with, uh, with, with this story, but oh, I yeah, no. want to chime in. Yeah. So when I started digging um, and doing my uh, piss poor amount of research for satanic panic, this was the one, th- this was the, like the first thing that popped up. And th- so it, it was the thing that I looked into the most and what, like, I didn't really understand what the big deal was about like the whole repressed memories thing, like why that was so bad because uh, like I had been familiar with that form of therapy, like that with the combination of hypnotism, like I knew that there were real life cases of people like going to a hypnotist and bringing to the surface repressed memories so that they can actually deal with previous trauma that they had repressed um but uh, and i'm sure you're getting to this um there is a huge downside to this whole uh repressed memory therapy that uh, they ended up making up fake ones yeah yep i mean it and that's been i mean that's been the biggest criticism um mm-hmm. obviously of the recovered memory movement essentially and and the whole background of that the author of michelle remembers was michelle smith she got a hundred thousand dollar advance again in 1980 and then she got almost two hundred and fifty thousand for rights royalties and an almost movie deal um that's 1980 money 1980 money and as a matter of fact let's go ahead and isn't that basically that like times three? I can't do math. So like I, 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 I could be, you're wrong, asking the wrong but... person. <laughs> it is. So her hundred thousand dollar advance today is closer to 350,000. Yeah. Um, it's just a little over 350,000. And then that she got 247,000 for the rights and royalties and stuff. That's almost a million dollars. 
Wow. Yeah. So she may bank off of that. Mm -hmm. And the end result of that book was she ruined a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a very significant amount amount of people's lives yeah um, but it wasn't it like do you think it's honestly something that she did on purpose or do you think like she was just in a very suggestible state and like it was really yeah. the psychologist's fault y yeah that's that's yeah. my question it's i mean granted limited knowledge limited research but it seems like the uh the the psychiatrist what's his name um it was why didn't somebody with three names? Uh, hold on. I, I think I have it here. Um, uh, Lawrence Pastor. Yes. Yeah. Lawrence Pastor. Um, it seems like it's that fucking guy's fault. Um, yeah, it is. Really because, and truly. Because, like, he, he was the one who was, like, he's the professional in this instance. Um, whether he knew what he was doing had these kinds of repercussions or not, you know, I, I don't know if we know, I don't know if he knew, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it should, you know, I, I feel like the blame should be put on that dude. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Because as you said, he was the professional in that setting. He was supposed to be the one in control. Right. Um, no counselor, whether a therapist, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, is ever su supposed to ask leading questions when you're in a suggestible state. Yes. For this exact reason. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I think that they knew it at the time, too. He thought he was... I genuinely think he thought he was doing this new, cool, groundbreaking thing. And I, I do kind of think that Michelle Smith genuinely believed that the memories that were recovered were real true memories that were so horrific. She had to repress them because yeah, I mean, if as a child you had been raped, you know, very violently over 600 times, that's absolutely something you wouldn't want to think about every moment of your life. You'd want to squash that, just take those feelings and just squash them right down. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think it's a, a case of she thought that she was telling the truth. He thought that she was telling the truth but the science behind it was just bullshit and harmful yeah. to the long term. Mm -hmm. um, there were no scientific studies done about it at that time. There was no scientific research. This was just something he was out here doing, which, you know, shows you with, with that entire field, you have to have the science, like you have to know how the mind works and you have to have the science to back up what you're doing or you're really going to fuck up a whole lot. Yeah. Like, ugh, God. Yeah. For so, sure. so like I said, that book is, is coming out while everybody's fucking freaking out about the high number of child sexual abuse cases. And we're, we're freaking out over the fucking devil because the church of Scientology really doesn't or Scientology y'all <laughs> church of Satan. Same difference. In my mind. We can have that conversation another day, but like, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, those guys are weirdos too. I mean, no, actually, sorry, scratch that. Uh, the Church of Scientology are the fucking weirdos. Church of Satan is all right in my book. Yeah, honestly, like there's like they are they're they're, they're in two different choice. categories. <laughs> they, yeah, they're actually they support humanistic endeavors. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're, they're not just terrible people. Yeah, they. they they're pretty rational people. They just happen to like this red dude. <laughs> well, and I, I do know a decent number of members of the church of Satan who aren't in it because they believe in Satan. They're in it because of the nine ultimate beliefs of the church, mm -hmm. which I mean, number one, straight up front, they'll tell you like the number one rule is we're about hedonism. If you want to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. Fuck everybody you want to fuck. Do all the drugs you want to do. Do everything you want to do because it's your life. Yeah. Um, God and, bless and that hedonistic lifestyle. Those are the real heroes. <laughs> of dying at 30 of a rare disease you got from some hooker. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, do it. Okay. <laughs> I'll watch if that's on the what you want to do, the Church of Satan is here for you. Like, mm -hmm. they support you. They're the the drunk best friend who supports every terrible decision yeah it's like That's... i'll hold your beer 
<laughs> yep, that's exactly them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so three years after Michelle Remembers was published, another um, psychologist named Dr. Roland Summit published an article in an actual journal saying that if you question a child to, to ask them if they were being sexually abused and they said no, they're lying to you. Yeah. So I, basically all children have always been sexually abused. Yeah. I, I read that in your notes and I was like, fucking what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like you have to assume that like the child, like every kid is lying to you. If they said that, no, they have not been touched. Like where's the fucking sense in that? Yeah, because, I mean, what's what's the defense for that? You yeah. as a child, like if you say no, they're gonna keep pushing, and uh, children are suggestible. Like they, so, now sometimes, and I know that y'all know this. I just know this for my nephew. Sometimes they like to just scream no in your face repeatedly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like sometimes that's all they want to say. Yeah. Um, sometimes they they genuinely are telling you the truth though. Like sometimes the answer actually is no. Right. Um. So going in with this very damaging point of view of, I know this child's been sexually abused and they just don't want to tell me and I'm going to get it out of them. You're just creating an enormous problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, even like having experiences as like a teacher, mm -hmm. um, if you keep asking a kid and they get more and more attention, the better their story is their story is going to get better every time. It's more elaborate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just becomes a game of telephone. I mean, we've all played that game and that's essentially what's happening here. Yeah. That's, that's why police like to question people over and over and over again is because, uh, you know, if they are lying, they will eventually fuck something up. Like one of the details. So if your story keeps changing, that's a big, like a big old Russian red flag. Yes. Like it's a, just a, it's clearly obvious. So, and that's what kills me about this like overarching thing with the satanic panic. All of the people, like there were over 100 daycare centers and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of daycare employees who went on trial for sexual abuse and some of the wildest fucking shit. Like we, they were accused of some wild shit. Mm -hmm. Like the children, some children, quote unquote reported allegedly reported that while at daycare again so like again y'all know better than me but daycare is four and younger right uh most of the time I mean, yeah yeah, yeah uh, it's, like they're yeah. little wee little, wee little yeah. babies mm-hmm. are talking about how they watched animal sacrifice and they watched human bodies being cut up i mean these are things that kids this age would have absolutely no concept of Right. So either they actually did witness it or someone told them or suggested mm-hmm. that they might have. Yeah. Right. And then, like Lindsay said, the story gets bigger and bigger every time. Right. And, you know, it starts out as we were locked in a closet and it ends up with we were locked in a closet full of spiders and snakes. And, and you know, we saw ex- – so the story gets bigger every <laughs> time they tell it. And that's what sells the headlines. Mm-hmm. And – um was something I read was like a lot of the details that they did provide didn't match up. Like a lot of times they would say like, Oh, they took us down into the basement and the house didn't have a basement. Didn't even. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I read about that too. I was like, wait a second. So it seems like with a very minimal amount of fact checking that this could have been cleared up pretty easy. You're like, Oh, this, this place doesn't have a basement. And they said it did something's not adding up here hmm i mean it's basic common sense and people were so genuinely excited (laughs) yeah well i mean again arc arc of human history right there Mm -hmm. uh but (laughs) what i what i find enjoyable and frustrating about human society as it currently stands is that we all of us like all the people who are driving on nashville streets as wild as they are are the the product of millions of years of evolution. Mm -hmm. Like this is the best we've ever been so far. (laughs) Yes. And, and and we have so many potholes. Oh God. Um, So going back to, to Lindsay's point, I mean, that was kind of one of the pivotal things about the largest and most expensive 
criminal proceeding in the history of the United States, which also happened, started in 1983, when Ray Bucky and his mom, who owned the McMartin Preschool um, in Carson City, California, I want to say, they were accused of, and I don't want to get into any specific details because it's just genuinely horrific shit, but... Mm -hmm. The most I'll say about this is the main catalyst was they were accused of raping and sodomizing a two-year-old boy, but then they were also accused of, I think originally it was a little over a hundred, I want to say like a hundred and, between a hundred and ten, a hundred and twenty um, crimes against, ch sexual crimes against children, and then that number went up to like 315 or something. I mean, it. So it was him and his mom and four of the teachers at this preschool. And one of the things the kids said is, yeah, they took us down in the tunnels underneath the daycare and they walked, you know, this is what the tunnels look like. And this is where the tunnels took us to. And we were tortured for hours, except these kids didn't have a single bruise or scar on them. And from my understanding, if you're tortured for hours, that that's one of the things that happens. Yes, it will leave a mark. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, you can't the, really torture someone, um, and uh, and it it's just not physically look like it, right? Unless I mean, unless it's mental abuse, that's that won't leave a, a physical or, scar. But these kids were talking about being. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that leaves anything. I mean, so technically, yes, that does leave physical evidence, but you can't find it unless you do an X-ray because it it scars your lungs and internal organs and your heart, from what I understand. Are you uh, are you are you talking torture. about water or are you talking about uh, waterboarding? Yes. Okay. I was I was I was going to say Chinese water torture, but I didn't wasn't sure if that was insensitive, uh, or <laughs> probably. I mean, just. <laughs> I, I, um, I just I had a flash to um that scene in uh team america where they are doing chinese water torture on the chinese girl in, in the group. honestly i don't even remember that movie <laughs> it's it's one of those like blink and you miss it moments um ah, it stupid gotcha. anyways uh <laughs> getting back on track hail satan <laughs> there there you go i yes. like that's that's literally what everybody in the 1980s is so worried about hearing i don't think anybody ever heard it but they're so terrified mm -hmm. um so again more and more daycares are getting charged as the 80s go on and just some of the most insane charges i've ever heard of in my life um so then you you've got several movements that kind of start one is called the believe the children movement mm -hmm. which Again, I think we've seen parallels kind of in our lifetime with the Brett Kavanaugh hearing and some of the other, you know, Believe Her and the Me Too movements. It's right. like a very similar movement started coming out where you've got one group saying this is literally impossible. Like what they're saying is literally impossible and it doesn't make sense. And then you've got a, a minority, but it's it's not a small minority. It's a larger minority, but it's still a minority of people saying but no, the children said that they were hurt and the children are important and the children are the future. And we have to believe these children or else we're doing like, why, why don't you want to protect children? Right. Why, why are you with the Satanists on this one? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it seemed like a very clear cut team to side with. Like why, why would yes. you side with these, these dark mysterious people over these young innocent children? like exactly like it's it's a no-win situation yeah. because if you used your logical brain you were branded a child hater <laughs> because humans are shit to each other we do this yes. to each other all the time yes Fucking worst in a, in, a, um, in a very rinse and repeat manner like we have oh yeah and we just ignore history like like oh yeah that nothing like this has ever happened before let's repeat it <laughs> It's so frustrating. It's yeah. so frustrating to sit back and watch. And ugh. yeah, yeah. As, <laughs> as a historian, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah, it, it just, just to learn the, 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 the incessant um, re repeating of bullshittery mm -hmm. throughout. Um, yeah. The, the, the world's history. 
<laughs> not just our country's history, but just like people. The world. Yeah. yeah. Human nature is cyclical. And just when we think we've gotten smarter than our ancestors were, we do some dumb shit like this. Mm hmm. And it may have been Salem 1692. It may have been the McCarthy era. It may have been um, like we've done this over and over and over. And that's genuinely the only thing that's frustrating is you can see it coming. You know the language, you know the rhetoric, you know the playbook, and nobody gives a fuck because they want to get sucked into it. Like yeah. people just genuinely love these conspiracy theories. And it's like, I guess, I don't know, for them, it's like slipping into your most comfortable pajamas. It's just right. something you put on every day. Like, yeah. I'm going to go be crazy. <laughs> <sighs> well, I think it's like people really want to be right, you know? Yeah. They want to be on the right side of things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and pick, you picking the children seemed like the right choice. Yeah. Right. It's an easy win. And, and until you start using logic. <laughs> Right, right, until you start like actually thinking about the situation and assessing it from an adult point of view. Precisely. Uh, so the media played a super enormous part of this, again, paralleling modern life. Mm -hmm. The media just came in and made everything worse. They got, again, if it bleeds, it leads. They got so excited about all of this horrific news that they, I mean, they couldn't stop talking about it. It wasn't happening in literally everybody's backyard but they made it sound as if it was so everybody right. was terrified yeah um i did include this quote from a 1989 st louis post dish dispatch newspaper article um so on february 15th 1989 they claimed that quote unquote cult authorities said that quote devil worshipers perform 50,000 human sacrifices a year nationwide you would think some of those people would be, you know, reported missing or, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, so. there The bodies there, would have to turn up somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you said that. That makes me so happy. So one of the big things, of course, during this time is if, if you were just some dumbass with a big old mouth, you could go out there and make a living as a cult authority or a cult expert or recovered memory expert. Like, you didn't have to provide any credentials. You just had to show up in, I mean, I, I guess with enough teeth to be on camera. In a, a fucking Scooby-Doo van. <laughs> exactly. And they're going to be like, this this person is clearly an expert on this subject. Let's write down every word he says. <laughs> um, but that same Post-Dispatch article, the the author even was like, this all just sounds weird. 50,000 human sacrifices a year but the national murder rate is less than 25,000 a year. So like the math right. doesn't check out. <laughs> and of course the experts were like, Oh, well it's because they dispose of the bodies in X, Y, Z manner. Like they, mm -hmm. they drain the blood and then they mutilate the bodies and then they use part of the remains for their sacrifices. And then they burn everything else. So you're not going to find it. bone doesn't always burn. Right. So we would find if there were 50,000 people a year going missing just from human sacrifice, this is not on top. I mean, this doesn't include any other type of homicide or mm -hmm. missing person. It's wild. Yeah. Um, fuckery so like, everywhere. Everybody's involved in this fuckery. It was everybody's favorite fuckery. <laughs> um, I remember after school specials on that kind of related to this and how you should stay away from Satanists and how to recognize Satanists and yes. And what they might say to you and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and if they want to touch your special place, say no and go find an adult. Like that was always the wrap up of all of them. If anybody wants to touch your down downtown, just say no and run. Go down here. <laughs> um, so it just, I don't know. It seeped into so many different aspects of our lives. So, and then, yeah, you've got like, there wasn't Jerry Springer yet, but I imagine if Jerry Springer had started at the, because I, well, I guess he did. Didn't he start in the late eighties? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I knew uh, about him around the, you know, the nineties, but yeah. I, I honestly uh, am, am not unsure of when he started. 
there might be a Jerry Springer episode of Satanists. I'm going to Google it. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, but Oprah did an entire episode on child sacrifice where mm-hmm. she had people with recovered memories on her show. Sally Jesse Raphael did the same thing a couple of times. Um, and then the titles of these episodes are my favorite. Um, <laughs> Oprah's was just child sacrifice. Sally Jesse Raphael's first one in the late 80s was Baby Breeders. And I don't <laughs> entirely. I don't entirely understand that one. Baby breeders. Um, Wouldn't I, every straight couple be a baby breeder? Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, that 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 I yeah that doesn't narrow it down that. to anyone with a penis and a vagina. I mean, yeah, like where do the Satanists come in? <laughs> uh, which I guess was the entire point of the show. Like you have a baby and then Satanists come in and take it. I don't know. Right. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. Well, I guess I guess these people were having these babies in secret so there's no birth certificate and then giving them to the satanist to sacrifice right i mean (laughs) well and that was the plot of rosemary's baby basically i mean Mm -hmm. rosemary's supposed to have that baby for the satanist so yeah that was a one and done movie for me it creeped the fuck out of me i was like ah yeah yeah i I was it 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 bothered a lot (laughs) I feel like it's supposed to, so... Yes. Um, I think that's... And and plus, just, like, Roman Polanski is a fucking weirdo. (laughs) And and so the way he directed that movie was just... Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I feel like he was the right person for that subject material. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, nail on the head there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So, kind of moving forward, like, the 80s is just happening. Everything's happening. People are... And I won't even say the whole country is super divided because, again, you've got this vocal minority of people who are like, the devil's eating our kids and they're touching them in daycare and then they're making our kids watch human sacrifices. And, um, but the, the larger majority of Americans were like, this is fucking weird. This is so fucking weird. I can't wait to watch more of this on the news because it's so fucking weird. Like, they couldn't get enough of it. It was, it fascinated them because it was so outlandish. Right. Again, parallels to today. Well, it's just like every true crime story throughout history. People are lining up to, you know, get their little piece of the gossip. Yep. Oh, God, we love gossip. Humans as people, like humans as a, as a whole love gossip it makes us mm-hmm. so excited we know something that somebody else doesn't know yeah and yeah, that's can't get enough it's you know the whole thing behind every conspiracy theory you just you, there's yeah. enough to be believable and then it goes off the rails wildly but you still believe it because you know something that other people don't know you know the truth yep um which yep. you know keep a pen in that because it's all going to come back mm-hmm. so it really seems like early to mid 1990s, everybody just really started to calm the fuck down. Like the, the normal logical people started to win the conversation. Basically Um, several documentaries had come out between 1989 and 1993 about recovered memories and how they actually were not viable and how it was a terrible fucking idea and how Mm -hmm. all of the science that they had been doing over the course of the eighties behind recovered memories does not align with the actual practice. Like, you, right. Like you can't actually recover memories, but you can plant them. Right. Um, yeah. Like regular memories are absolute dog shit, let alone like At the best of times. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you know, take these repressed memories, like, just like you said, like it's, it's like inception. It's like, putting fake memories in people's brains and be like, Oh yeah, he, he said it. He said it like, so it must be true. Yeah. He said it while he was laying on my couch. Yeah. hundred percent. And then you keep adding details to it to make it seem more believable. Yeah. And Oh God. I, I can't remember hardly anything about my day to day personal life. So like my mm. husband's constantly telling me, I've already told you this. I've already told you this. And I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yes. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but if he tells me that he's already told me, I will 
develop a memory in which, oh, yeah, we were in the living room and you were wearing that blue shirt and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a thing. So right. it's your mind tries to fill in the gaps. Um, one of the worst ones was called Search for Deadly Memories. <laughs> and not one of the worst titles. Love the title. Right. Hate the fact that in the documentary, they went specifically through the steps about how to get people, quote unquote, to recover their memories, what you should say to them, how hard you should press them. Don't let them, you know, stop talking, make them keep talking, make them build on their story. So you're like forcing them to kind of create a story to get you to shut the fuck up. It kind of sounds like the uh, witchcraft and seance book that I picked up at a uh, hot topic back in like <laughs> 1999. That all t tracks. Yes. All yeah. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Like back when like hot topic was like the scary place to go to. Um, and, uh, and I don't even know who the fuck goes into hot topic now, but it's, uh, it's Justin Bieber fans. Yep. The last time I was in it, I was shocked at the number of women over the age of 60 that I saw in that store. Like, that's <laughs> the majority of their customer base, it looks like now, which makes me feel fucking old as shit. Women but yeah, over it's, 60. It's all is... anime and Justin Bieber and women yeah. there with their grandchildren. Yeah, that, that sounds all accurate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not a customer base I'm a part of anymore. But no, give it twenty years, I'll be there. I'll go yeah. back to a hot topic with my nephew when I'm old enough to be his grandmother. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, like it, what amazes me about this early 1990s time period is that it really is the tail end. Like Satanic Panic is coming down hard. It's on a steep decline, and then you get the West Memphis Three. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it was at the point where the FBI wrote a formal report, again, that I have open on my computer currently, because this is going to be my leisure reading when I'm I'm done with some of my other reading. Right. I'm just going to read this FBI report from like <laughs> 1993 on how there was absolutely no evidence of even one incident of satanic ritualistic sex abuse in the mm -hmm. United States. Like right. they trashed the shit. And man, there were some good quotes that I got from that. Um, but, you know, Ger Geraldo apologized. Like, even Geraldo was like, hey, you guys, I've had some time to reflect, and I said some shit, and I need to apologize <laughs> for that, because I was wrong. So, like, yeah. even Geraldo yeah. felt bad about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then in a – so let me skip forward a little bit, technically, at the very end of what really brought Satanic Panic crashing down. In 1997, um, there was – a child sex abuse court case and a tape was quote unquote found and turned over to the defendants. And it was the recording of the girl's therapy session. And the therapist straight up was like, you need to tell me that your father touched you here, here, and here. You need to tell me that your uncle did this to you. You need to say X, Y, and Z. Um, and what kind it, of robes were they wearing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, like, we had already published studies and documentaries about how suggestible children were, and then you've got this therapist here, like, you know, how did it feel when your dad touched you? Like, asking right. questions about an event that never happened to this small, suggestible, terrified child mm -hmm. when the adults in this child's life were saying you've been sexually abused, and the therapist was saying you've been sexually abused, and this kid's like... I mean, I haven't, but I'll answer your questions to make this stop. Basically, so that yeah. came out in court, and that was the big crashing down. Um, one of the quotes I put in my notes from the FBI report, I do want to read that real quick. Quote, if your child's molestation was perpetrated by a sophisticated satanic cult, there is nothing you could have done to prevent it, and therefore no reason to feel any guilt, end quote. So it was the FBI's ultimate findings that people were making this up so that something terrible could happen that they had no control over whatsoever. <laughs> like their hands are clean, even though their kids' lives are supposedly wrecked because all of these horrific things happen to them. They play no part in this whatsoever because it's not their fault the devil exists. Right. Right. 
they didn't make the devil. So it's it's got to be okay. And it's so just, you would think that we would have learned enough from this to <laughs> prevent all of these like false confessions and stuff that are going on in court now with mm-hmm. people of decreased mental capabilities nah, and fam. children. <laughs> nah, now nah, we're going to keep on fucking over Brendan Dassey's until the cows come yep. home. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, fuck well, and- those uh, police officers in particular who uh, force-fed that dude for, like, five hours straight. Like, oh, yeah, so you did, like, kill this girl, right? Yeah, right, right, huh? Yeah. Right, right? <laughs> well, and in in my own podcast, in one of the most recent episodes, Nashville Nightmares, I talk about the Paula Herring murder. And the police at the, and this was in 1964, the police at the very, very beginning decided that their suspect was John Randolph Clark, that this was the guy who was going to go to jail for murdering an 18 year old UT Knoxville college student. And they found evidence that fit it. Unfortunately, there was a lot Mm -hmm. like John Randolph Clark got so fucked. Yeah. Um, There's, uh, if you listen to the podcast, there's a whole reason behind it, but you know, they, at one point, Clark says that 15 different police officers were interrogating him at the same time, and he was relying on certain medication to stay alive. They denied him his medication. They denied him meals. When he started getting sick from the withdrawal of his necessary-to-live medication, they refused him a doctor. Yeah, that's fucked up. For 11 hours. Yeah. This happened over the course of 11 hours, and... You know, eventually you just get to the point where you're like, fine, fuck it. Will you let me out of this room if I say yes? Yeah, see, that's just straight up fucking torture. That That mm-hmm. is torture. Like, I mean, it's against the Constitution, but like, fuck it, I guess. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, you know, fuck those everyday citizens that deserve rights. <laughs> right. Like, we're, we're the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have lots of feelings on that subject, but that mm-hmm. is exactly what happened to the West Memphis three. Um, one of them, I want to say it was, was it McKinney had an IQ of, of or below 75. Mm-hmm. So very, so anything, um, anything below 70, then usually that's considered like, mental retardation like yeah i mean it's yeah you it's you're considered developmentally disabled and mentally incapacitated and you're not able to speak on your own behalf you're not able to participate in your own legal defense which is why the insanity plea exists i got a whole other rant about that Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that rant will come out if you ever ask me about the history of um insane asylums in the united states that yeah. rant will show up. We'll it get makes to it. It frequently. <laughs> um, but they, you know, a terrible, terrible thing happened in, in West Memphis. Um, three young children named Steve Branch, Christopher Byers, and Michael Moore were murdered. And this was 1994, like the goth phase. Mm-hmm. Like goths were becoming a new, big, super cool thing. Like that's what Hot Topic was catering to and of course because it was goth it was also immediately satanist yeah they didn't even have to like stretch at their imaginations to make that connection so because damien eccles jesse miss kelly jr and jason baldwin were all little goth kids and one of them was developmentally disabled they're automatically the perpetrators these men spent 21 years behind bars one of them was scheduled for he was on death row Mm -hmm. when they finally were exonerated 21 years later. They did nothing wrong. Yeah. And over the course of a decade, hundreds and hundreds of people in the United States were falsely imprisoned. And all the fun stuff that comes along with the federal government peeking into your life and potentially accusing you of these major crimes. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I should say state and federal government. Um, you know, there's forfeiture of good. Like, you have to forfeit some of your stuff. You can't make money. Yeah. All of these things happen to people just because people went so fucking insane over the rise of reported child sexual abuse and 
heavy, like heavy metal. It's so much. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and also what pisses me off about the West Memphis three, since we're talking about it, mm-hmm. they were not let out of prison until 2011. But starting in like 1996, some of the kids who were behind the accusations in the eighties came out and said, I made it all up. None of this was real. I was told to say this. I was pressured to say this. My mom, my dad, somebody made me say this. Mm -hmm. So people were coming out left and right saying, no, this was all made up. We, but never happened to us. And these kids still had to sit in prison until 2011. And I say kids because they were fully grown men by the time they were let out. God bless them. Um, But (sighs) even the parents, even the parents of the victims um, Mm -hmm. were coming out in their defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. So like that just tells you how much evidence that they had. Like, yeah. If all of a sudden, you know, you're going to convince me that this person didn't hurt my child, it's going to take a lot to turn me around on that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and as a parent, if you do genuinely believe that your child has been sexually abused, I can't, I cannot imagine something worse. Mm-hmm. Like that has to be such a horrific thing to go through and to experience. And then to just be told like randomly, no. Not really. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be hard, a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then, like, again, because the overarching theme of today's podcast is humanity is trash. <laughs> six years after the West Memphis Three were released, QAnon really makes its first big entrance, mm-hmm. like, into the common lexicon, essentially. They start making the news believing that there is a shadowy cabal who kidnaps children, tortures them and uses their blood in satanic rituals. And now well, this is completely new, <laughs> completely new because it's politically motivated. It's not Th- their mascot might as well be Krampus. <laughs> Honest to God. Why is it not like somebody call their marketing people? Exactly. Like Q and Krampus. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing here yeah Um, i mean they i bet their biggest uh supporter is like birds aren't real (laughs) i see those little birds aren't real stickers all over town i'm just like so fucking funny like that was a a running joke for a small period of time when ted was on the podcast like we were doing the uh um the uh let's see the the informal paranormal series and oh, nice. we did one on uh, one of the episodes was the ocean. And granted, it's not paranormal. Uh, we were very upfront about that, but we were like, the ocean is scary as shit, and it's it's just nightmare soup. Um, and so somehow we got on the topic of dolphins, and I just spat it out like dolphins aren't real either. Stay hashtag stay woke. <laughs> And and just for like a couple episodes after that, it became like a running joke that like I'd bring back up every once in a while, like hashtag. I mean, I've never seen a dolphin. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm in this club. uh, They're slick, rubbery (laughs) skin. They're, you know, they're just hiding, you know, waiting to pounce with their, their ginormous brains. They're going to get you. Aren't they like very sexually aggressive? Don't they tend to to, Uh, like rape people? Yes. (laughs) Haven't I read that? (laughs) Oh, good. The one thing uh, I know about dolphins, and that's it. Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> dolphin, hashtag dolphins are rapists. I don't love it. Uh, no. Yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> well, so, um, I will make one quick point about the ocean, I swear, and then I'll, I'll go back to this. Do it. Any, any excuse to talk about the ocean. Like, you know the ocean is fucked up and dangerous. It's the only place we haven't colonized yet. Like, humans mm-hmm. are living in Australia. In Australia, like we're trying to go to the moon, but we are not trying to live underwater. For you know good why? Reason. It's scary as fuck. Yeah, Cthulhu is down there. Fuck that guy. Mm-mm. Not into it. Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I stay my white ass on the beach and further back. Um, I mm-hmm. yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's really hard to be this pale 
without working at it. Like you actively have to avoid going out in the sun. Right. Yeah. You, uh, you, yep. you, you got an SPF that's in the triple digits. <laughs> yep. Love it. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> um, so yeah, going back to, to QAnon there. So this, this is just yet another moral panic in our country's history. Again, we've had several, we we don't really have them on a set schedule because, you know, we had it in 1692 and then we didn't have another one until the 1800s. And then we didn't really have another good one until, you know, the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, and then you get the, the satanic panic and now it's QAnon. And w- would, if... you, would you say that this qualifies as mass hysteria or is it more like a moral panic? I know, I know that they called this a moral panic, but I, I mm-hmm. wasn't like, I know about mass hysteria, but I, I wasn't sure if it technically qualified or if that's something else. It, yeah, I would, I would definitely say in pockets of the country. Now you're talking about satanic panic, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Cause I don't, I don't have a ton of numbers for QAnon, but for satanic no, panic. I, I, would, I would, I would not, I, I would not consider, I, I don't think QAnon has the numbers to, to really consider that. Uh, uh, my grandmother's one of them they're wild y'all i don't even they've taken my gaga i don't i don't even know what to do about it um no i I would definitely say she's a fucking treasure but man when she starts talking about some of this stuff i just don't even know like i just stare at her like i don't even know what to say it's it's some dumb shit Mm. it's uh, god bless her i love her yeah um good for you granny (laughs) fucking psycho don't don't let her hear you say that. She will fucking come find you. My Gaga does not play. <laughs> she is not here to fuck around. Um, no, I would definitely say that in pockets of the U.S., I'm very comfortable saying that in pockets of the U.S., the satanic panic was absolutely a mass hysteria. But the like I said, the, the larger overall numbers, well, and I guess it's time dependent too. Um, I did read one of my sources said that what was it the late 1980s a poll suggested that 70% of people in the United States genuinely believed in this satanic cabal mm-hmm. who were hurting children at daycares. Yeah. Yeah, um, that sounds right. So it's um, the numbers were very very high and obviously they they dip more and more which is why I'm so surprised that the West Memphis 3 trial even actually went down the way that it did. But the do- right. if you watch the documentaries about it, it it makes complete sense. But then if you kind of stand back and just look at it, it's ridiculous mm-hmm. that these children had to go through this. Yeah. Um, young men. Is, uh, is there a, a is, are there multiple documentaries on the, the West Memphis three? Because yes. I, I know that there's, there's like the OG, but that, came out in like the the mid 90s i believe uh yeah it was all very fresh yeah um so i I was curious if there had been any slightly newer ones like post them getting out of prison um i actually i have not seen one that's really no go ahead i haven't seen one that's post exoneration um, but I mean, it was a documentary that led to their exoneration mm-hmm. and I don't know y'all's personal feelings on the subject. Sometimes I get real mad at HBO because HBO max sucks on the the PlayStation. Like it's, it's oh. challenging to watch on a, a PS five. Uh, but H- on a, Oh, you got a PS five. Ooh. Oh yeah. We're fancy. I got a raise y'all. <laughs> Good for you. Christmas um, was a good year. We year. we we could afford one, but uh, we we still like we don't know the right people in order to be able to find one. That, that is our problem. So, my best friend actually told me about it. Um, if you go to PlayStation's website, mm-hmm. you basically just sign up to receive a notification. Um they have these little select groups and basically they, if you're accepted into one of the groups, they email you and tell you like, Hey, on this day, starting at one o'clock central time, 
you can go to our website and buy a PS5. Hmm. You have to have, they give you a special code, the whole thing. I did not think that I was going to make it in that group. Um, but then I did. So yay. Interesting. Got... That's cool. Well, so congrats. The... Thanks. Um, um, so on, the... on the PS5 and the race. Right? Like I'm, I'm thrilled about both of those. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on up. So um, it's, and it's genuinely because I no longer work in a museum. I can afford to eat because I no longer work in a museum. Good for you. I love it, but I miss it. So, but yeah, the, the HBO Max app is shit on the PS5, <laughs> but HBO is the one that genuinely led the way with some very groundbreaking documentaries that helped to like kill off Mm -hmm. The entire sat satanic panic. They're the ones who, I believe, did the documentary that exonerated the West Memphis Three. Yeah. Like HBO is out there doing some great things, I guess. Yeah, I, I feel like each, uh, in terms of like, um, you know, the whole these guys walked so these other guys could run. I feel mm -hmm. like that's HBO to Netflix. Like HBO, like learn to walk like crawl and walk so that Netflix could take the ball and run with it. Like HBO still does yeah. docs um, all the time, but like, I, f I feel like Netflix has kind of carved out a space in the streaming realm nowadays for yeah. like their original documentaries. Oh, a hundred percent. I just yeah. finished personally. We just finished watching the um, keep sweet about the FLDS and Warren Jeffs. I just saw that today. I can't uh, wait. I, it's so good. What What is it? I, this is I, I don't I, you. I don't think you even spoke English to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did just really fast. Um, so it's called Keep Sweet. I think there's some more title to it, but Keep Sweet is the FLDS motto: the Fundamentalist Latter Day Saints, the po the polygamist Mormons. Oh, okay. Um, out there in, in Utah and Texas, Nashville has a sect of mm -hmm. FLDS people that I have yet to find, but I've been cruising around since I was like 16 looking for them. So like <laughs> maybe one day, I don't know. Um, but Warren Jeffs basically killed his dad and then took over as prophet of the FLDS Classy. in U Utah, Nevada. Yeah. Like, Oh, their history is so dirty and I'm so fascinated by it. Like it is, mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Um, and he, mm, he's he took insane, on basically. like 73 wives, I think. Wow. Which is still less than his dad had, but he took some of his dead dad's wives. So technically he celestial married some of his stepmothers, like eight or nine of them. And they were all younger, like significantly. It's, it was gross. Like they yeah. were half his age. Um, um, did you, uh, did you happen to catch, uh, that HBO documentary, the, the way down I think is called, Yes, isn't that nuts? Like, especially us like living in Nashville, like that's yeah. it's so fucked up that it just happened in our backyard. Like, um, they, that whole family are neighbors to my brother and sister-in-law. Oh. Like they legit live next door. Yeah, to my brother and sister-in-law. Uh, so like, fucking oh creepy and gross. Full-on cult, like terrible cult. Um, have you have you watched the the follow-up that that just got released? I think it was just yet. one episode. Um, I it really was just one episode, right? I honey? think so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but they like they uh re-interviewed people because like I, I think a lot of uh the documentary was initially filmed before um you know, big hair, crazy ladies mm -hmm. plane went down. Um, so they brought a lot of people back in and they asked like their honest opinions about, you know, fuck face dying. And, and a lot of people were like, we do not feel bad. <laughs> and I was like, nor should you because you should fuck she was that family in particular, like fuck yeah. them up the cooter hole. Like, Give them an extra helping of go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. it's, it's all, they can have all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Warren Jeffs, the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, Just a big old. <laughs> D-bag. Oh, God, I fucking hate. That's, that's just, quite frankly, the nicest thing that you can say about him. Um, Dope. They really went in, and because he is who he is, he wrote everything down, so they, they knew exactly... How he arranged orgies with girls as young as seven and wow 
they found the room where he did it. They found the audio recordings. They found the video recordings. They found everything. And so he's going to be in prison for the next 120-ish years. So that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, loved that. But also Under the Banner of Heaven on I've heard about Hulu. that, too. It's uh, one of my favorite books. Yeah, is uh is, is that the the um it's not a documentary but it's mm. uh um it, it it's a uh, a series but based off of true events right yes and it, it's uh that's the one with Andrew Garfield yeah okay, oh god cool. I love yeah. him yeah, yeah. I, I I heard that was good that I added that to my list and um usually when people bring up series on Hulu I was like oh yeah I I forgot I I have Hulu. <laughs> I own a Hulu. It's the, it's the cheap <laughs> ass you get it with Spotify version, but I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um. So Under the Banner of Heaven was a truly fantastic book written by John Krakauer, who also wrote Into the Wild and Where Men Win Glory about pa- about Pat Tillman. I love all of his shit. Mm-hmm. He is he's one of my top like five favorite authors. Um. But so Under the Banner of Heaven is about the murder of a woman and her baby, her infant, like a three-month-old baby, back in the 1980s. Um, not part of Satanic Panic, but they really, sure. I think, it all kind of happened at the same time. Um, and they were, it was an FLDS family. So it was a wife who was born and raised a very devout Mormon. She married into a very crazy family. Mm-hmm. And did not get out um, in time, basically. She was trying to convince her husband to give up on the fundamentalist stuff. And her brother-in-law killed her um, and her baby. So the show, the book is about the murder and the history of the Mormon belief system and their culture and, and the FLDS. But the show is more about the police investigative angle mm-hmm. towards yeah. solving the murders. And it's so good. It's a, it's a short run. It's like six episodes, I think. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> did uh did you happen to catch the the Hulu series on um I, I think the the girl from Plainville, I think, about the the girl who um texted her boyfriend to kill himself? Yes. Yeah. Well, I watched the 2020 special on it. I don't think I watched the the Hulu the, one, but uh, the 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 series was okay. The documentary was was really good um i I think the documentary is on hbo um okay but uh yeah it's they they did a good job of playing both sides like Hmm. you know it like at first glance you're like yeah fuck that bitch like you know just straight up texting this yeah like kill yourself but like at the same time like incessantly day after day he was talking about killing himself and her being an undeveloped uh, 17-year-old girl was probably going insane with this dude talking about killing himself day after day. And she was finally like, fucking do it then. <laughs> and I mean, you can't say get help. Here's a number you can call. Like, yeah. there are people that care about you. But instead, you're just like, if you don't fucking do this, I'm going to do it for you because I have to stop hearing about it. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. God. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it, it really is a, a terrible circumstance. Um, there, there was no, there's no winning in that, no. that case. Um, but anyways, uh, it, I, I think that's, that's pretty much all we have for mm-hmm. um, the satanic panic, right? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. I, I jumped from, no, like it's... one religious system, the Church of Satan, to cults. I f- yeah, I, I figured we talk would. About cults. Yeah, um, of course, because they're they're amazing to talk about. Um, <laughs> as Creed Bratton says, you uh, you have make more money as a leader, but you have more fun as a follower. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, dead. Ash- dead honest. Yeah, Ashley, thank you so much for doing all that research and coming on and talking with us about this topic because it was one that i was super interested in like i I didn't know a ton about it i it was more of a thing that i knew of but i wanted to learn and i do best with learning and comprehension in this type of forum where you know i i get to talk with someone that can that not only understands it but can put it in an entertaining way and that's 
that's why I wanted you on. Um, and Thanks. which is actually a good lead up to promoting your podcast, um, Mimosas yeah. and Mysteries. Yeah. I, so you want to talk about quite that? Quite happy just a to second? do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so Mimosas and Mysteries is a podcast my sister Summer and I have going. Um, I want to say we release our episodes every Wednesday ish. It really just depends on what's happening in Summer's life because mm -hmm. she's carrying me on her back. God bless her. <laughs> um, but we talk. We have mostly focused on true crime. I'm gonna try. I'm getting. I've got some paranormal episodes written, so we're gonna yes. we're gonna talk about some spooky stuff. I'm so excited. Yeah, we Ugh. we want we want to hear about that shit because, um, and, and if you ever need someone to come on and talk about their one single spooky ass experience, actually, I I guess I have like now one and a half, um, because the really? uh, yeah we got home from our vacation uh to Orlando a couple weeks ago, and I I got up uh on a, a step stool to change the air filter upstairs and the latches are on the other side. I have been changing the air filter for uh, like every, t like every three months, um, which is probably not frequent enough, but since we moved in this house like three years ago and all of a sudden the latches for the door to come down and then you replace the filter, you put the door back up, yeah. you close the latches. The you latches are three. on the wrong side of the fucking air filter. Were you approaching it from a different angle? Nope. Like, is there only one way to, like, because with ours, there's really only one way to approach it. Uh, no. So, there's, I mean, uh, you... so it's at the top of the stairs and like, you you really have to like you have to go around the the stairs to now get to the part where like the latches are i i just i i ne i don't remember ever replacing the air filter from this this that angle other side yeah um and it creeps me out because i remember reading uh i don't know if it was a, a reddit post or or something but like someone thought uh, they moved into a, a house that had been on the market for a while and it turns out like they thought that someone was watching them from uh like the 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 air register in the ceiling and uh it turns out that fucking someone was like someone was squatting in that house for months yeah. before they moved in and like this person mm -hmm. thought they saw eyes like just peering down at them but they you know they were like ah, i'm just you know seeing shit but no like someone was squatting in that house and then they yep. moved into the fucking attic and see that person moved in i was like nope <laughs> <laughs> goodbye internet <laughs> so i've heard several kind of similar stories and every single one terrifies me because mm -hmm. like there, there's just enough differences in the story that they're not they're clearly not telling the same exact story but how many how many motherfuckers have somebody hiding in their vents looking at them? Like I've heard enough of the stories now that it seems like it's a larger issue <laughs> than I maybe this is a, thought that it might be. Yeah, this is a bigger deal than satanic panic. Like satanic <sighs> panic wasn't a thing, um, but people hiding in air vents is a real problem. All right, well, <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Everybody freak the fuck out. Yeah, and check your check your vents. vents because somebody lives in there. Yeah, it's very um, upsetting. <laughs> But yeah, seriously, it's if also you, probably spiders. If if you do start to do um, uh, paranormal episodes and need someone to come on, um, I, I'd gladly come on. And uh, even if it's not sharing my one one story and experience, um, if it's just talking about you know one particular niche part of the subject. I'd love to come on. Um, so, oh, absolutely, I'm yeah. down for it. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, the this world needs is another white man interjecting his, their yeah. opinion uh, in <laughs> into uh, a a situation where it's unsolicited. <laughs> yeah, I mean, please, the one opinion we haven't heard on this subject yet is that of the white man. So, thank you, David. Yes, that's these great. white men are dangerous. <laughs> And it comes back full circle. Yeah. <laughs> I love um, it when we stop where we start. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. That's what they call a callback. Um, well, Ashley, once again, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate yes, it. Yes. Thank you so much.
And yeah, I love thank your you podcast. So much for yeah. Thank you. Yes. You can um, find it on Spotify, Apple, the internet. Just like Google it. There's. Yes. It's I'm not good at this everywhere. like summer is. There's social media. Just mm-hmm. mimosas and mysteries. Look it up. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> it is. And it's good. This is why summer does marketing. <laughs> Um, and listeners, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you made it this far, uh, don't forget to leave us a rating and review. Subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. Um, and as always, be kind, stay geeky, and eat lots of cheesecake. Bye! Bye.